To the bowl of a stand mixer, add 350 grams of water and 100 grams of active starter. Mix in your stand mixer using the paddle attachment until the starter and water are fully incorporated. Add 500 grams of bread flour and 10 grams of salt. Mix again using the paddle attachment until everything is just mixed. Now switch to the dough hook. Scrape down the sides of the bowl to help the dough hook grab onto the dough. Knead on a medium speed, speed five to six on a KitchenAid, until the dough completely removes itself from the sides of the bowl and passes a window pane test, 10 to 15 minutes. You can see how much my stand mixer is shaking near the end of kneading. Take care that your stand mixer does not jump off the counter during this time. If your dough is not picking itself up from the sides of the bowl as mine is by 15 minutes, check your flour. There's a chance it may not be strong enough. If this is the case, simply add more flour until the dough is able to pick itself up. Then stop kneading the dough and continue with fermentation. At this point, bulk ferment your dough for approximately the same amount of time you would a hand-strengthened loaf. Keep in mind that dough temperature will be warmer from the kneading, around 75 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're using a proofing aid, the dough will not need time to warm up. From start to finish, I usually ferment my loaves for about nine hours at a room temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit before shaping. In my opinion, judging fermentation for this loaf can sometimes be more difficult than a hand-strengthened loaf, but it will be the key to the success of this loaf. Since I usually fold my hand-strengthened dough for two to three hours, I let my stand mixer dough rest for that amount of time on the counter. Then I gathered it up and transferred it to a straight-sided container to allow the dough to double in size. This step is entirely unnecessary, but helps me judge fermentation better. In the end, it was not quite doubled in size, but I went ahead and shaped it anyway. White rice flour is the secret to preventing loaves from sticking. I rub this into the lining of my banneton really well. If you don't own a banneton, you can simply use a one and a half quart bowl lined with any kitchen towel. I do lightly flour my surface for this loaf because I find the dough is slightly stickier than my hand strengthened loaves, no matter my timing. Here's what the dough looked like right before I shaped it. I chose to simplify shaping into one step instead of two for this loaf. If you prefer the typical pre-shape, rest, then final shape, I will link my original video in the description which has all of that process in it. For this loaf, I will show you how to laminate your dough. With this method, you can incorporate any mix-ins you choose with ease. After turning your dough out onto the counter, stretch the dough into a large rectangle. Size doesn't really matter here, but as much as it will stretch on its own without tearing is perfect. At this point, you can add any fillings, such as cheese, seeds, or even cinnamon sugar. Fold the dough over itself into three layers. You could also add more fillings here, if desired. Then roll the dough up like a log.
Last, we will use the push and tuck method to finish shaping our round and tightening the outer skin. Look how beautiful this ball of dough is. At this point, you can flip it into your banneton or bowl. This is absolutely perfect and can be transferred straight to the fridge just like this. But I wanted to show you how to stitch the bottom, in case you need it. Stitching is just gonna give the skin one last tightening and will help neatly close up any seams on the bottom of the dough. To stitch the dough, simply work around the edges of the round, bringing them to the center. Now, cover your dough with a plastic bag. And transfer it to the refrigerator until the next day. At least 30 minutes before taking your dough out of the fridge, preheat your Dutch oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The baking stone underneath helps prevent the bottom of my loaves from burning. Turn your dough out onto parchment paper or a silicone baking mat. Score your dough a quarter to a half inch deep, keeping the razor or lawn parallel with the counter. I did end up doing a five minute score on this loaf, which I did not film, as specifics for this optional step were in my last video, linked in the description. Bake in your preheated Dutch oven for 25 minutes with the lid on. Optionally, spray with a few spurts of water to add a little extra steam, which helps with expansion and prevents tearing. After 25 minutes, remove the lid and bake 20 more minutes with the lid off. The internal temperature should register 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool for at least 30 minutes before slicing. Look at how beautiful this loaf turned out. I did mention a five minute expansion score and on this loaf, you can actually sort of see the difference that the score made. Here's the original expansion and then the extra expansion from the additional score. The crumb should be similar to a hand-strengthened loaf if your bulk fermentation timing was correct, but it's never quite the same due to the more aggressive mixing in the beginning. Overall, this method still produces great results and may be preferred for some. Thanks so much for watching! If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more!